Hey everyone, we are really excited to be able to announce that we'll be running our Shine 4 to 9 events this summer for students completed grade 4 to grade 9. We've been working really hard to make sure that this will be a safe and a fun summer for everyone. Because of the season that we're in, our events will look a little bit different and one of the big differences is that you'll need to sign up in advance because spaces will be limited. So you can email me, Hannah, at cornerstonebaptist.ca to sign up or check our Facebook page and we can't wait to see you there this summer. Hey everyone, we are really excited to be able to announce that we'll be running our Shine 4 to 9 events this summer for students completed grade 4 to grade 9. We've been working really hard to make sure that this will be a safe and a fun summer for everyone. Because of the season that we're in, our events will look a little bit different and one of the big differences is that you'll need to sign up in advance because spaces will be limited. So you can email me, Hannah, at cornerstonebaptist.ca to sign up or check our Facebook page and we can't wait to see you there this summer.
Hi, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who has been delivered from being heavily addicted to pornography. However, I still struggle with the lustful thoughts from that addiction and the need to be loved. Hi, I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I am a recovering anorexic who struggles with anger and control. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggled with a lifelong pornography addiction and huge codependency. I still struggle with anger, anxiety, and depression. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I've overcome drug addiction, but I still struggle with anxiety, codependency, and self-worth. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I have overcome codependency, but I still struggle with anger and control. Hello, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I have overcome alcoholism. However, I am still struggling with anxiety and depression. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with a fear of failing, a need to perform for value and meaning, and I also um, am overcoming codependency and trust issues. Have you ever wondered why you hurt? You can't get past your habits, your hang-ups, and you're frustrated with where you are in life right now, and you're stuck. CR is a Christ-centered recovery program that helps you go deeper with God and gets to the root of why you feel the way you do. Come celebrate recovery with us. Hey everyone, before we get started today, there's just a couple things I want to draw your attention to. We're well into the summer and there's all kinds of opportunities for you to get connected in here at Cornerstone in this community of faith. And if you're one of our regular attenders or regular viewers, we would love for you to go to our website, go to our Facebook page and just see different spaces for you and your family to get connected in, whether that be through Shine Ministry, the grades four to nine, men's ministry, women's ministry, and a whole host of other opportunities. I would just really encourage you to do that. Today, as we move into our time of worship, there are lots of voices that are competing for our attention. There are lots of things that are competing for our heart's affection. And in the middle of all of that, I simply want to invite you to listen to these words that Victoria is going to read that reminds us to be still and know that God is present. His voice is the voice that shapes our life in every season of our entire life, that we might rest in Him, grow in Him, be grounded in Him, and experience goodness that comes from that. Please listen. God is our refuge and strength in ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear through the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake in their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells, God is within her, she will not fall, God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will exalt among the nations. I will exalt in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Hey, everybody. I grew up in church singing a song, Just As I Am, Without One Plea but that your blood was shed for me. I come, Lord, I come. And uh, this first song that we're all going to sing together is the same type of call to worship, but with more modern take on that song. Let's enter into his presence today. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come brokenhearted and let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow that Jesus can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that Jesus can't heal. So 
to lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face, a wanderer come, oh, you're never too down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope. There's hope for the hopeless, all those who strain, come sit at the table and taste of God's grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures, earth has no sorrow that Jesus can't cure. Earth has no sorrow that Jesus can't cure. Lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. All who are
I can sing in the troubled times. Sing when I win. I can sing when I lose my step and fall down again. I can sing cause you bring me up. Sing cause you're there. I can sing cause you hear me, Lord, when I call to you in prayer. I can sing with my last breath. Sing for I know God has faithfully led his people. Nehemiah writes that a pillar of clouds led them forward by day and the pillar of fire showed them the way through the night. He sent the scriptures to instruct them. In Psalm 143, David prays, let me hear of your unfailing love each morning for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk for I give myself to you. In Psalm 25, he asks, Show us the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for us to follow. Lead us by your truth and teach us, for you are the God who saves. All day long, we put our hope in you. In Psalm 5, he prays for all of us who seek God's face. Lead us in the right path, O Lord. Make your way plain for us to follow. You are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you Working in this place, thank you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in. my God, that is who you are, you are, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are here, you are here, touching every heart, I will Fire! 
I don't feel that you're working. You never stop, you never stop, no. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, it is, Lord. We sing to you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark, my God, my God, that is who you are.
after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me It's running after, it's running after me Your goodness is running after, it's running after me With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after, it's running after me You have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Help me to sing Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Right now we want to take some time as a church family to pray for Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is a program for those who are struggling with hurts, with hang-ups, with addictions of any kind. This program seeks to come alongside those people as they find healing and transformation in Christ. So we want to be praying for Matt and Leah McLeod and their team as they lead through this COVID season. We have heard from them that they're still looking for a couple male leaders. So if you're a man who has a heart for this, please consider uh, and pray about joining their team. We also want to pray that people's hearts would be softened and that there would be transformation through Christ, that people would feel safe to come. So would you please pray with us as we bring Celebrate Recovery and that ministry before God in prayer.
I want you to think about some of the influential voices in the world right now. Things like politicians or CEOs who can redirect economies and stock markets with, with a single tweet. Things like the, the social media influencers or the thought leaders in every YouTube advertisement, the, the podcast hosts, the, the YouTube personalities, the, the best-selling authors, these, these loud and influential voices that shape culture. We, we live in a time fueled by, by social media more than any other time where the number of these loud voices, these popular ideas out there, they're, they're increasing, and these voices are just continually getting louder. As, as followers of Jesus, we're often going to find that these loud voices are speaking directly against some of the truths we know about Jesus. Or these, these loud voices are advocating ideas that are so easy to swallow that they go viral and they become kind of the commonly held values of our culture and yet at the same time undermine what it means to follow Jesus. They run completely contrary to the way of Christ. These can be subtle or explicit things. Things from tweets to posts to, to movie plots to, to even more formalized things like, like uh, laws and, and school curriculum. Here's, here's some examples. I'm sure you've probably thought about some of them by now. The loud voices of, of the world right now are often telling us that, that happiness is something that we create for ourselves. That in pursuing our own dreams and desires, that's how we're going to make ourselves happy. Whether that is, is through our own sexual expression, whether that is creating our own purpose for me versus what is best for anyone else. And, and often this, the undertone of this view of happiness, it, it, it is telling us that to submit our lives to Christ or to any any kind of authority over us is stifling and, and is actually uh, oppressive for us. We see this voice loud in, in, uh, in self-help literature. We see it in, in all the, the guru, gurus and the, the people trying to help us to find purpose and enjoyment out of life. We see a lot of loud voices telling us that our value actually comes from uh, the, the success we have in our career being seen as, as successful or having the best things by other people. It's, it's having value from a, a perfectly curated Instagram feed that shows the world how well we have everything together. We see this in the, the YouTube ads that come up before every video that tell us, you know, if, if you just follow this plan, if you, if you work hard and are determined enough, you can have this Lamborghini in your garage like me. You could be selling, uh, making, you know, seven figures, working from home, doing this, and your value is going to come from how you have sacrificed every relationship and family in order to pursue this. We see loud voices in our culture telling us that, that we will never live down the failures of our past. That, that the mistakes that we made back then, we're never going to overcome them. We're never going to redeem ourselves from them. The, these voices will continue to echo at us from across the internet, whether it's, it's in the ruthless comment section mob, that, that you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, you don't deserve that job, you don't deserve any redemption for that tweet that you made 10 years ago. We see this in the, the, the mounting aggressiveness of cancel culture. Because of this social media age we live in, we can't escape these loud voices and what they're telling us. But as followers of Jesus, we can learn what it means to develop the kind of prayer life that helps us hold firmly to the truth of God and not succumb to the loud voices despite how persuasive, despite how loud, despite how popular they may be. This week, on this journey of, of becoming a people who pray, we're going to dive into the depths of the Old Testament, into the story of King Hezekiah from 2 Kings chapter 19. 
Now, King Hezekiah, he was a descendant of King David. He was one of the rulers of the southern kingdom of Judah. Uh, it's some 600 years before the time of Jesus. And Hezekiah, unlike many of, of uh, his ancestors and contemporaries, he was a good king. He worshipped God. He, he cut down idols. He encouraged the worship of God in Jerusalem at the temple. But what was going on at the time was the Assyrians were the superpower in the world. They were just sweeping around the Mediterranean and the Middle East, taking over, conquering territory. And we see that the nations around Judah, they were being conquered by the Assyrians. We see even the, the towns and the regions surrounding Jerusalem were all conquered by the Assyrians and their king Sennacherib. And so in the story of Hezekiah, the Assyrians are on the doorstep. And King Sennacherib, he sends a messenger to the walls of Jerusalem, and he's, he's boasting out loud, speaking not just to King Hezekiah, but to anyone who would hear, saying, don't be fooled by your God. He's not going to protect you from me. I am the superpower who is defeating all the nations around you. You have no hope. Don't listen to your king. Don't listen to your God. Bow down to me, and I am going to rule over you. We need to get this, this picture in our minds, right? The loudest voice in the world at the time, the most influential, popular voice, was telling God's people not to listen to their God, not to listen to Hezekiah, their leader, and instead to bow down to him. Let's look at how Hezekiah responds in this situation. Picking up in verse 14, we, say, we see that Hezekiah received a letter from Sennacherib's messengers, and he read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. He said, Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Now, what's interesting in this part of his prayer, he's saying these things that are true about God to God in his prayer. Now, it's not that God needs to be reminded by Hezekiah that he is the one God alone over all the kingdoms of the earth. God doesn't need to be reminded that he is the one who made the heavens of the earth. But what Hezekiah is doing at this moment is he is praising God for what he knows to be true about him in order to remind himself what is true. He praises God to remind himself what is true. See, in, in going before God, he, he's reminding himself that, that despite the fact that King Sennacherib says that he is the king over all the nations, that he is the one conquering territory after territory, God is still the, the one who rules over the nations. God alone is the one on the throne. And what's so powerful about this is, is praising God for who uh, he is. It, it works in two ways, right? First of all, it's an act of worship. And it, and it submits ourselves before God and lifts up him for who he is but it also acts as a powerful reminder. When we're in that place and we acknowledge God that He is King, He is mighty, He is the one in charge, it helps our hearts, not just to rem remember in like an intellectual way, but it lets it sink in deep down. When we're overwhelmed by the loud voices in this world bouncing around in our minds, we ought to go to prayer and to begin praising God for who he is. It's so simple to just, just start saying things to God that we know to be true about him. Maybe, maybe we need to kind of have these like go-to worship songs that, that really do a good job of, of lifting God up for what his word says is true about him. To just say things that are true about God to God as an act of worship. That as we do that, it would... It would be an act of worship towards God, but also a, a reminder to our own hearts of what is true in the midst of loud voices. 
Let's, let's keep going to the next portion of the prayer. Hezekiah says, uh, It is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste these nations and their lands. They have thrown down their gods into the fire and destroyed them. Here's what's interesting about this part of his prayer is that Hezekiah acknowledges the appeal of the loud voice. Right? He's, he's saying there's, there's truth to what he's saying. Sennacherib has conquered many territories. There would be reason to be afraid. He has shown that he is superior to the gods of other nations and regions. But Hezekiah also shows why God's truth still rings true, despite the, the, the validity of some of what Sennacherib says. Let, let's look at the rest of the passage. For these gods that Sennacherib destroyed were not gods, but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. See, Hezekiah is acknowledging acknowledging the, the loud voice of Sennacherib and saying, yes, he defeated a lot of regions and their gods didn't protect them. That's something that should be acknowledged and wrestled through. But I'm going to apply the truth of what I know about God, that he is the one only true God. And that even though that might be true about these other nations, it's not true because God is going to protect his people. That none of these other gods were able to protect or stand up. When we're finding ourselves challenged by the loud voices of our culture, it's important that we, we work through with God the, 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 the things that these loud voices are saying. To acknowledge, here's why this, this is appealing. Here's why so many people are, are nodding their heads when these loud voices are saying these things. Let, let me give you an example when the, the loud voices around us are saying that our, our happiness is created by us pursuing our own desires, by us living out what we want to do instead of what anyone else does. We, like Hezekiah, can say, it is true, Lord, that, that there are a lot of things that look like they might make me happy. There's a lot of things that I want to do and that that I desire to do. There are dreams that I have. There are ways that would benefit me that might expense others in me trying to pursue my happiness. But I can apply what I know to be true about God and say, but God, my ultimate joy is in you. That, that I might chase these other things, but I'm always going to be wanting. And the unshakable true joy that, that I need, the fullness of life, that I'm actually looking for only comes from you. Only comes from submitting myself and following Jesus with my life. We, we see it in the, the value uh, conversation where the loud voices are telling us that, that it comes from being seen as successful or owning nice things or being liked by others. And we, like Hezekiah, could say, it's true, Lord, that, that I want to be successful. I want to be liked by others. And, and those aren't necessarily bad things. But my true unshakable value doesn't come from other people's perception or opinion on me. It doesn't come from, from how good my career is. It comes from the fact that I am a child of God adopted through Jesus in his finished work on the cross. The fact that I'm made in God's image and God sees me as, as valuable enough to send his son to die for me. We see it in the shame conversation that tells us in these loud voices of our culture that we'll never outlive our mistakes, that we'll always be a failure, that we'll never be good enough. And we can say, yes, Lord, it is true that, that I've messed up many times. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've failed time and time again. And I don't feel like I'm good enough in a lot of ways. I don't have what it takes. But, I know that my sin is forgiven through Jesus' work on the cross and his rising from the dead. I know that, that God, you see me as guiltless because of, of Jesus, the spotless lamb's sacrifice for me. God, God you, you call me worthy and you see me as, as you see Jesus because of what he
He's given for me on the cross. This, this practice of responding to the appeal of the loud voices with God's truth is something that as followers of Jesus, we need to constantly be growing in. Constantly be bringing up. And as we understand more and more of who God is, of what His truth as revealed in Jesus and the writings of the Scripture actually are, then we'll be continually getting better at this. We'll be able to respond quicker when we hear these loud voices. We'll be able to apply God's truth in more pointed and specific ways. This, this highlights for us how important it is for us to immerse ourselves in God's truth. To be people living in God's word on a regular basis. People listening to how God is showing himself to us. So that we can confidently respond to the loud voices with God's truth. Hezekiah finishes up his prayer saying this in verse 19. He says, now Lord our God, deliver us from Sennacherib's hand so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. In this section, we see that Hezekiah prays for all people to be anchored in God's truth. When when I'm praying, knowing how appealing, how, how good these loud voices can sound, when, when I can easily accept the message that I'm being told that, that my shame is, is something I'll never be able to outgrow or, or to overcome, I, I'm reminding myself of God's truth, but I ought also to be praying for others who are hearing this message, who are living in this shame continually, for them to be able to understand God's truth and for God to set them free from that shame as well. In this, it's a, it's a prayer for other people to see what is true about God. For Him to reveal this to them so that His voice becomes the right response to the loud voices out there. This also means that I'm probably going to be telling people what I know to be true about God. To be telling people when, when they're overwhelmed by the loud voices in the world when they're overwhelmed by the social media feeds and the the TV personalities and the boisterous politicians with Twitter, that God's truth is the perfect response to this. It is what we can be anchored in when we're being told so many things by so many influential people. What's uh, the, how God responds to this prayer in Hezekiah's situation Hezekiah and and the city of Jerusalem surrounded by the massive Assyrian army. God actually sends a a plague that that devastates the Assyrian army one night and they go into full-scale retreat. Like Jerusalem becomes the one region that they didn't conquer in their conquest. It becomes the stopping point where they actually retreat from. The God who was the king over all the nations, displayed himself as more powerful than Sennacherib. So that anyone who heard about that event ultimately got to see that the God of Hezekiah, the God of the people of Jerusalem, he is the one who is true. His voice is uh, truer and, and ought to be listened to much more than Sennacherib's or the Assyrian. God showed himself to be true so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that he alone is God. Listen, there's a lot of voices out there. And there are going to be a lot of moments where we just slip into listening to them and following them. And, and a lot of them that are going to be harmful and we're going, to, we're going to listen just because they're popular. But as we grow as a people who pray, Let's praise God for what we know to be true about Him. Let's let's acknowledge the appeal of some of these loud voices out there and apply what we know to be true about God to those loud voices. And pray ultimately that everyone would see what is true about God. Let's pray. God, You are the one true king. 
You are the one who is uh, over all nations and tribes and regions. You are the one God who is, who is truth. That even though there are many loud and influential and powerful voices that are shaping us and shaping our culture and shaping our world, truth is, is found in you. And I pray, God, that you would, would help us in the moments where we are susceptible to loud voices to respond with your truth. To not fall into what is being said, but to be able to know you well enough. To know what you say well enough. To be able to respond to those loud voices. God, I pray that all people would, would see you as king, would see you as truth, and would find the freedom from their shame, would find their true value, would would be able to experience the unquenchable joy of life in you. That all people would see how glorious you are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. I will love I want to thank you for joining us today as you've gathered online to worship the Lord. There's a couple of things I want to draw your attention to before we bring our time to an end. 
I know the fall feels like a long way away, but when you break it down in a calendar, it's five or six weeks, and we are gearing up for all kinds of wonderful ministry opportunities in the city of Charlottetown and across the island that are going to require your prayers. We are gearing up for Celebrate Recovery with Matt and Leah, and it promises to be incredible. And this will be one of the main ways we as a church reach out into our town, into our city, and we are just promising and trusting, hoping that God would continue to do what he's been doing for years and years and years in reaching men and women who are lost and are struggling in all kinds of ways. And we just look forward to that ministry. And I would invite you to pray for Celebrate Recovery as we move to this beginning in the early fall. The men's and ladies' ministries are, are being planned now as we move towards the fall. And I would invite you to pray for those ministries as well. Hannah and all of her team in the student area of ministry requires your prayers. Victoria and Nicole in their children's ministries, there's exciting things coming in the fall for them. Well, hopefully, we'll be able to gather in different ways to bring them together, uh, to grow in Christ, to form community and beautiful relationships. And we would just ask you to be praying for them in very pointed ways. All of this requires your generosity in significant ways to further the work that we've been called to together as a church family. And we'd invite you to give into that in whatever method you would most comfortable doing. Uh, but church, we have much to be excited for, much to be thankful for, as we have been a, an, an eyewitness of God's grace and mercy as he draws people to himself through the community here at Cornerstone. And we look forward to more, more of that this coming fall. Before we break, if you're in a house church, please watch these discussion questions and use them just to facilitate conversation in your groups as you gather around food or coffee or whatever it is that you're going to do. God bless. Have a great day.
Hey everyone, we are really excited to be able to announce that we'll be running our Shine 4 to 9 events this summer for students completed grade 4 to grade 9. We've been working really hard to make sure that this will be a safe and a fun summer for everyone. Because of the season that we're in, our events will look a little bit different and one of the big differences is that you'll need to sign up in advance because spaces will be limited. So you can email me, Hannah, at cornerstonebaptist.ca to sign up or check our Facebook page and we can't wait to see you there this summer. Thank you.